Today we're going to be replacing a battery in this 2009 MacBook Pro, 13 inch model. Uh, my dad bought it brand new back in 2009 and um, I think this is probably like the second or third battery that I've put in it in that time frame. Um, I've replaced the keyboard at least once, I've replaced the trackpad at least once. Um, we've put memory in, we've pulled the, the optical drive out, replaced it with the terabyte backup drive. We've done basically as much work as you can do on this computer, and while it is certainly old, um, it's perfectly capable for most day-to-day -day computer users. So, um, I'm also going to kind of be showing some of the workflow that I use for doing basic electronics repair, which has been kind of notable to people that I've shown in the past. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start by simply flipping this guy over. I'm gonna open up my battery pack. The battery came with the screwdrivers necessary. Although, I, if memory serves, I need um, you need Phillips head for the exterior screws on this guy, but there are some of the tri-wing screws on the battery itself, which is why it's handy that a lot of the batteries came with. This one just order, I ordered from Amazon. It was one of the Amazon choice options. However, um, I always make sure to switch the sorting preference from featured to custom reviews and get something that has a high number of positive reviews because a single five-star rating versus, you know, an average of four and a half stars over 150 rating is certainly a much more trustworthy option. So, all right, here's the battery. We're gonna just set it aside for now. That's gonna set it aside on top of its shrink wrap. Now, if you have done electronic repair, you may notice that I'm not using a, an electronic, an ESD mat or a bracelet or anything to that effect. Um, not a best practice. It, it would absolutely be better to have that in, in, in opening up any computer or electronics. But I'm also going to demonstrate that you know it's not strictly necessary. We can mitigate most of the, the damage that could potentially be caused simply by, um, you know, I'm not wearing shoes or socks right now. I'm just, my feet are per, uh, planted firmly on the ground. I have, there's no, there's no static built up on my person, which means that in opening this computer, I should have, be at minimal risk of you know, causing any sort of discharge that could cause damage to the computer. Um, also, given the fact that I'm doing the battery and I'm not pulling out any of the other more sensitive electronics inside the computer, the battery is rated for you know 60 watts. So it's a little shock from a static thing, probably wouldn't do any damage. I shouldn't be causing any static discharge anyway, but even if I had a small small amount of discharge to go into the battery, it shouldn't cause any damage. Um, but we are going to take precautions to make sure that that doesn't happen in the first place. I have never actually used an ESD bracelet in working on this particular computer, and it has been working perfectly fine for 10 years now, with the exception of the battery and a couple other wear parts that have, over time, worn out as they are wont to do. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do before I even remove any screws from this thing is I'm just going to take a piece of paper and a pen, sketch out the rough layout of the computer, and then noting I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then a center in each. I am actually missing one screw I lost, oh shoot, at least a year ago at this point, and I have yet to order a replacement for it, but it hasn't seemed all that necessary. Um, so I've got my diagram, I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, center, center, and I'm going to note that this one is missing a screw, so I'm not actually going to be you know, looking for that when I decide to put this back together, or when I get to the point of putting it back together. Done with my pen now, and you'll note that all of the little markings are roughly where they would be on the, the computer. If you're pulling you know, multiple layers deep apart, then, you know, make multiple diagrams, mark where the screws would go on those. If you need to use some, you know, like a magnet, magnetic tray or, you know, some double-sided tape or even some tape loops to make sure that things stay in place, 
go ahead and do that. Um, if you, you know, if you're working, I'm working on a pretty solid desk right now, so I, I could run into this thing, knock it around, and the desk isn't going to move, which means any screws sitting on this paper aren't going to move. But if your workspace is not, you know, similar to that, then you know maybe set the the diagram and, and screws, you know, somewhere where they're not going to get bumped and knocked around. So we're going to go ahead. This is not the correct size. I think it's small. All right. Starting with, I believe this is a double zero Phillips head. We're just gonna go through, make sure that the driver has positive engagement in the, the screw. And then once it starts to, once you can hear the threading kind of jump because it's completely removed and it just kind of jump, you can hear kind of a little click, click, click as it screws and is just kind of spinning in place. We can know that that one's done. I'll pull it out, put it in the appropriate space. We're just going to go all the way around the computer doing this. There's no particular best way to go around. So if you want to jump around at random, if you want to draw any particular pattern, it doesn't really matter. Just however, however you want to do it, it is going to be fine. The only important thing is just make sure that you have positive engagement. These are very, very tiny screws. Um, so if you were to slip, you can strip them out very quickly. Um, these screws are all originals, if memory serves, and none of them have been stripped, despite the fact that I have opened this computer at least a half a dozen times. I try to make sure that the screws are on, in this case, because they've got a flat head on them, um, just sitting upright so that they can't like, roll around. Here, I'm going to take a look and see. The computer had been getting very, very warm. Um, now, I am of the opinion that it was likely the DC inboard trying to charge a dead battery, um, failing at doing that because the battery was no longer receiving an acceptable charge. This battery only lasts a couple of minutes at most. Um, so hopefully the, the heat issue that we were having is going to go away as soon as I put this new battery in, but I am also going to take a look at the heat sink right here and just see if there's any dust or otherwise just junk clogged up in the heat sink. Um, I can see down reasonably well and it looks like it is. I can see through, I can see through the fan pretty clearly um, or through the heat sink to the fan rather. So there's nothing plugged in this heat sink, which means I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, you can, I have pulled the, the, the fan out before and you know, pulled out a whole little pad of dust and pet hair and you know just things that have been floating around the atmosphere and got pulled through the fan and then built up. That'll happen. Um, that's honestly what causes a lot of computers to be replaced is because 
the heat sink is difficult to get to, and they are unable to, oh shoot. Okay, uh, this came with pentalobe screwdrivers, not tri-wing screwdrivers, which means that I am going to have to go dig into my toolkit. I know I have tri-wing screws. Oh wait, here it is, here it is, here it is. I thought this was a, I thought this was a number zero Phillips head at first. It's a, it's a tri-wing. So we do have a tri-wing. We'll go ahead. We've got one screw here and one screw here. Um, if memory serves, those are the only two that are holding it into place. So just as a matter of course, I'm going to go ahead and draw this up. Um, so keeping this from the same perspective. Look at that. There's a little tab that sticks out here. And that's where one of my screws goes. There's a little tab that sticks out here. That's where my other screw goes. We then have this power adapter, which comes out, I believe it comes straight up. So we should be able to just go like, either thumbnail or a uh, nylon spudge stick, which I have on the other side of the room, but am too lazy to go up and get, which would also cause me to get up and shuffle around and potentially cause some more static. Um, you know, I, I, simply touching the ground will discharge most of the static that you might have on your person. So, battery's out. New battery in. It's connected. And we can begin to reverse the process. And you want these to be these screws to be snug, but not like you know, jaws of life kind of strong. Like you, you don't need to strip the screws off. They don't need to be cranked in so hard, you know, as hard as you possibly can. They just need to be snug. So you want to make sure that nothing moves around inside the computer. But beyond that, you may need to push it down just a little bit in order to get the, the threads to engage. Once they engage, it'll hold itself in place really well. All right, battery's in. And that's it for this repair. And now we can reassemble. I usually do reverse order of whichever I took them out, but it doesn't, again, doesn't really matter. This is this bottom case is just eight screws. So I really wish more laptops, including Apple's, were designed this way today because this has been an absolute breeze to work on. Um, only exception being the keyboard and trackpad, which necessitate complete disassembly of the, of the computer because the, the unibody case, you have to kind of fill it up from the top down um, from the perspective of the user uh, when it's in its normal operating position. So the keyboard and the trackpad being on the very top, when you're using the computer, everything gets filled in below that. So they are the first to go in, last to come out. Even that procedure is not really much more complicated or any complicated um, than this one. 
it's just there are more steps. So you'll have more diagrams, more screws that you need to keep track of. And it, you know, you'll want to have a, a safe place to set the items that you're pulling out. Since you are pulling, you would be pulling out, you know, the logic board um, and all, you know, all the other components on the inside. You want to have a, a safe place to set them where they're not going to be damaged or they're not going to experience any static. These tiny little screws, I find that it's good to kind of spin them backwards a little bit so that they can line up the threads and then you can get them to, to go in smoother. It, it would be very bad to cross thread these guys, which is to, to not have the threads line up and force it to, to screw itself in place anyway. That can damage the threading and make it impossible to actually put the screw back in place. And again, we're just tightening so that they're snug, not enough to slip the driver or strip the screw. had to guess, I would wager a reasonable sum of money that this battery already has more charge in it than the old one did, even though it just got dropped off from Amazon less than an hour ago. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy, flip it over, open it up, hit the power key, and there it goes. So it turns right on. Hopefully we won't be getting any more issues with thermal throttling uh, as this thing, I, this guy was getting very hot before, but I'm reasonably confident that that was an issue with the DC inboard trying to charge a defective battery. Uh, yeah, booted right up, we're at almost 70% battery and Wi-Fi is back. So I'm going to give this back to my dad and let him go on using his computer.